And hey everybody, GM Matt here, just to briefly run you through version 2 of the Torg Eternity character sheet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a copy of that now. Um, the, the main difference on this sheet, aside from a few uh, cosmetic changes and a couple of, uh, couple of fields that have been added, the main change is that I've created roll templates and roll buttons that are going to automate your game a little bit more. Um, it's, it's not perfect automation. I don't know if you can ever really achieve perfect automation on a tour game, but this is uh, pretty close. It, it will take care of 70, 80 percent of your rolls and the other 20 percent, it's going to make them a whole lot easier. So let's just kind of walk through these, what they look like, and uh, how you can use them uh, for a few minutes. So most of the buttons that are on the sheet, including the ones beside the attribute values and beside all of the different skills, just do a basic skill test. They just get you started on that skill test. So for example, let's just take a find. Let's suppose we have uh, our character here. Uh, Dakota, he's going to do a find check. Well, I'm going to click on the roll button that is beside the find skill. And then I'm going to get an input that says, well, tell me how difficult this is. We'll leave this as a normal difficulty as a 10. But this is the point where the character or the player rather would need to ask the GM about what difficulty number to put in. And then you hit submit and you get this output right here. So you see we have a 10 skill uh, versus a 10 difficulty. We rolled a bonus of five, so we have a 15 total versus that 10, and that result is a good success. Now, let's suppose for whatever reason, I wanna try to push this on to an outstanding success. Well, I can do that. I can go up to the top of my sheet. I can spin one of my three possibilities, reduce those possibilities to two here. And then I can roll the possibility button. And this button is gonna, this uh, inquiry now is gonna ask me, what was my previous roll total? Because it's gonna need that to give me my new result. And if you look in the output of the uh, original roll, we see that I had a roll total of 18. So I'm gonna take that 18, I'm going to put that in and then bang, it's going to give me a new roll. It's going to give me a new bonus number now nine. So I'm now a 19 versus 10 difficulty. Oh, so close to getting that, uh, that outstanding result, but not quite there. Maybe I've got some cards that'll help me in this situation. Um, so that's how you, then those are the basics. You roll the skill and uh, then if you want to spend a possibility and just see what the effect of that is, you can do that. What I'm finding in the test games that I'm running with this is that you really don't need the push chart, uh, not the push chart, but the bonus chart any longer in, uh, in your games because this, this automation is pretty good at telling you what your bonus number is and uh, giving you the information you need in the chat so you can quickly assess the impact of that bonus on uh, on the original skill check versus the original difficulty. That, that was my goal at least was to, we're not gonna make it 100% automated, but we're gonna get it as close as we possibly can. So now skipping down uh, on the page, we're gonna go and look at how weapons work for just a moment here. Um, each weapon that you create in this bottom weapon section of your character sheet is going to have two buttons. It's going to have one beside the name of the weapon and then one beside the damage designator for the weapon. Those do two obvious things. One is your attack, the other is your um, your damage roll. So let's start with the attack roll. This, is, this functions off of a different roll template. I'm going to uh, hit roll on that and then uh, we're going to make this a difficulty 12 attack with this Uzi and I'll hit submit. And there you have it. We have a 14 versus 12 defense to begin with, and then we get a bonus of four. That's 18 versus 12, which gives me a good success. If I have any notes that I put in the notes field regarding this weapon, those would also show up 
with this particular role. We can also quickly see what the range is on this weapon if there's any questions about uh, whether this should have been at medium range, which would affect the roll. But hopefully we have all of the me mechanically, we have all of the numbers sitting out in front of us pretty readily if we need to adjust the numbers somehow. We've got them all laying out in front of us so we can see pretty quickly uh, what kind of changes need to be made. All right, so we've got a good success on this roll. So now let's go over and we're going to roll for damage right here. And this is going to ask us now what kind of success do we have? Well, we had a good success, so I'll put that in. It's going to ask us what our target toughness is. Let's make it a pretty tough target. Let's make it a 15 toughness target. And here we go. We roll our bonus die. And the effect, we add that 4 to the 13 for a 17 versus 15. So we have a 2, what, what I'm calling in this an effect. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. We have an effect of two, which puts us, that's a measure of the difference between the toughness of the target and the, um, the weapon damage. And so we're doing two shock. I uh, suppose though I've got a coup de gras card. Well, there's a button down here that we can hit. If I want to play my coup de gras card, I put my previous effect of two in there, roll another die, and we got a new effect. Three more points gets us a five, which does get us up to two shock in one wound. So I've managed to wound with my attack against a 15 toughness character uh, now that I've added that in as well. One other button before we leave this page that I neglected to mention, which is the one over by the defenses. This button doesn't really do anything except give you the bonus number that you'll use if you're actively defending for the round. So you just hit the button, it does the roll automatically, and here we got a roll of 19. We got a 10 and a 9. And uh, that gives us a defense bonus of 6 throughout the round. So a nice hefty defense bonus from this particular active defense. Uh, have added XP and clearance up at the top of the screen as fields, just so you notice that. The only other major change that you're going to see in version 2.0 is on the power screen. And, Dakota doesn't have any power, so we're going to uh, drop his character sheet. We're going to switch over to Omri's sheet. And here on her sheet, we can see she's got the bullet spell. It's the, her very top one. Uh, now, one of the things that I did on this sheet is I broke down all of the different fields that you see in a power, in the layout for a power in the game, so that those could all be you know referenced in role templates and things of that nature if uh, if you want to do that and use them in my own role templates as well um, now to use your power when you're ready to use your power all you got to do is click on the um the button here and it's automatically going to know that you're it's automatically going to look into your apportation skill and uh it's going to go look to that skill when you make this roll and it's going to want to know what's the difficulty. Well, we're going to make this a difficulty 10, just standard against a dodge. We roll, and here we go. We get a little bit more information here. Uh, the bullet takes one action. It's 100 meters. Uh, difficult. The duration is instant. And we get a beginning skill roll of 15 versus 10, which is already a good success. And then with a plus 4, we get to 19 which keeps us in the good success range. Uh, unfortunately, doesn't quite push it up high enough, but it is gonna give us some bonus die. And again, we have a damage uh, button that we can roll a little bit lower down here. That is gonna tell us how much damage we did with a good result against, uh, let's make it a pretty wimpy target, an eight point target there. And there we go. An effect after the bonus die of a seven, we see we're doing two shock and one wound. So I really hope this is going to help move things along. Uh, those of you who are skilled in uh, moving these roles over into uh, macros are probably going to want to do that. I've created a number of different toko, token macros in this particular game. Um, here, for example, I can roll just based on the token that's selected. I can roll for its active defense. 
that comes in super handy for quickly getting defenses up for, let's say, um, let's say uh, uh, NPCs of some type. Um, I can attack with a weapon in the weapon one slot or the weapon two slot from here. I can do a trick attempt uh, very quickly and easily. And incidentally, these uh, outputs that are coming from the roll templates, they will let you know in situations where there's a risk of a disconnect. Uh, for example, here we rolled a three, so we have a disconnect if there's a four case. They'll also let you know if you're in a mishap type situation. So you, you get a few quick reminders. I really think this is going to speed up games a lot. And it's, you know, one of the problems with Torg is you can sometimes just lose track of all of the different variables that are in play that are affecting roles. And, you know, you get off on a discussion and then you can't remember what your role total was uh, when you come back to trying to to you know you make a roll you have a dispute you get off on a discussion about what's what should happen here and by the time you come back you can't even remember what your roll total was before well it's always right there in front of you uh, if that if you get into that kind of a situation so uh, hopefully um, this template is going to help a lot I uh, I've got some other tools that hopefully I'll be posting on soon that are going to be I think are going to be helpful as well I've gotten some really great assistance from uh, from Aaron over in the API forums in creating a small little API routine that helps to calculate. It's going to be a tool for GMs to help them to calculate uh, the difficulty on PC attacks. And uh, hopefully within the next week or so, I'll be up talking about that as well. But hope you enjoy uh, version 2.0 of the character sheet. I think it is going to make a huge difference in moving along these, these Roll20 games. So long and we'll see you next time.